So uh, go on with uh, where you're at with this uh, property then, Wes. So one of the biggest lesson that I, I think that we've learned in everything that we've done is time is important. Uh, getting things done promptly, uh, getting, getting them done quickly is important. And we had switched lawyers to buy this property. We, we had one lawyer that we started with initially on another property and we weren't satisfied with them. We switched lawyers. And uh, my relationship with this uh, firm wasn't very mature yet and uh, things got delayed and they got delayed and they got delayed. And um, in the meantime, I think that we don't ever know this for sure, but I'm pretty sure, you know, I'm pretty confident that some other investigators started talking to our seller and she started getting nervous. Now she uh, had handed me, well, she uh, didn't hand them to me, we never met her, but she got me the keys to the, to the place. And we got in and we had a contract in place that we were just trying to get to a closing date. But my naivety, my, uh, my uh, lack of experience told me, well, okay, I've got a deal. I can start rehabbing. That really almost burnt us. It, it burnt us. We, we had spent, I think we had uh, repainted the house and I think we had put new carpet in the house. And uh, Jenny was overseas. She was in a, on an Ireland trip for her, her travel business. And I was up in Virginia and I got a call from my neighbor that said, the police are here and uh, the owner of the property has wanted to know what you're doing in her house. Now, my neighbor knew nothing about well, she, she did know something about it because I, I was using her for assistant, but but it was just totally co coincidence that the police happened to talk to my neighbor that we sort of had a relationship with in the business. And it could have been anybody that was slandering our name because this lady got aggravated about some things and decided to call the police while we were not even in town. I said, you know, we're on our way home. I'll talk to you. I, I got on the phone with the policeman, explained as well as I could that she was mistaken and she'd given us the right to be there and, uh, you know, that uh, we'll deal with it when we got home. And then I, then I started talking to her. I started, before I got home, I started calling her and trying to figure out what the problem was. Um, anyway, the, the, the moral of the story is we got way ahead of ourselves and we had to start dealing with this. Uh, she, she, wanted, she wanted to back out. In fact, her statement on the phone, her, not the statement on the phone, she left me a voicemail. What do I have to do to get you out of my house? I had a contract and I'd spent a lot of money and I'd given her some money. But um, so as soon as I could, I started communicating with her and, and I had to remind her that we had a contract and that you know we would you know if we needed to go to court to to to, to make things correctly but that was one that was one hand on the other hand i started looking to see what i could do to smooth the feathers and and what we decided to do was just go ahead and offer her her profit at closing and uh and i think she thought she could get more and i'm sure that some other investor would have been given her more, but we had enough of a contract and enough of, uh, of our stuff in place to, to, to redeem that. So we went ahead and got the closing and offered her what we had already offered her in cash and uh, proceeded to close on the deal. And with a lot of sweating and a lot of uh, disconcertion, we, we were really worried about that one. We'd, we'd spent a lot of our money and we were new and we didn't have a lot of reserves at all. So what, what were the numbers on that deal uh, so far, Wes? All right, let me share the screen now and, and show you that. Uh, clicked on share the screen. It should let you. Okay, yep, I got it. If I can not, all right, there. Oh, I've got to push another button. All right, so. Can you see my screen? It's, uh, it's uh, some marketing material we've put together as a case study on this property. Yes. All right, so this is, uh, this is an actual check that we got at closing that we put on there, and this is a property. 
we bought the property uh, in November of 2019 and we sold it uh, uh, in March. Um, March. March. So what I have this little yellow insert here for is to show a private investor what we can do. We, if we had uh, paid off the mortgage and invested in, in, and borrowed money from a private investor, we could have borrowed $145,000 on this property and they would have profited in, in six months a minimum of $7,000. So that's just, just something that, that I could present to them. The numbers as far as buying and selling it are, we bought it for $193,000. That's that figure right there. No. No, I, I'm sorry, we sold it for $193,000. Thank you. Um, we um, had uh, expenses of, th th these are carrying costs and, and different expenses of 121, that, the, the uh, redeeming the mortgage and such uh, of 121,000. And so what I call a gross profit is 71,400. We take out of that, <clears throat> what you can see over here, we had expenses of rehabbing of 18,700. So we ended up with a net profit uh, on this deal of $52,000, 52,700. Uh, so one of the ways that I like to look at it is this right here. This was how much money that we had out of the pocket, $64,000. We had a checking account to work with and we borrowed money from, we, we took the, the mortgages subject to, but that wasn't out of pocket. What we actually had out of pocket for the whole deal was 64,000 and what we profited on it was 52,000. So I like to look at this as a percentage of what we're out of pocket and we made 81% of what we spent to do that. Um, Beats uh, putting your money in a checking account or a savings account, huh? Yep, for four months. And, you know, okay, I started to say this one was bought in our uh, IRA owned company, but this one was not. This one was a prop for profit company. We Previous deals we had bought that way, so it was all tax free. But this is money we'll, <laughs> we will pay taxes on that one. Awesome. <clears throat> Excuse me. So basically, you took over the mortgage um, and uh, brought the loan current, and that was about 120, and it was worth. Uh, 190 plus uh, after repair value. So about a $70,000 spread there, right? Yep, yep. We, we actually looked at it in another way too. Uh, the, uh, the mortgage had been, uh, an another lesson learned, it could have burnt us, it actually helped us. I didn't confirm well enough what the payoff was of the, of the loan. And she represented it at a certain number and it turned out to be a different number. But what it turned out to be was $25,000 to our good. So that might've been one of the reasons she was trying to back out of it. She realized she was sitting better than she thought she was. Uh, so we ended up profiting you know, better than we anticipated we would. God's favor, I think. Uh, we, we just kind of lucked into that. We did our best. We screwed up royally in several regards. And, you know, we've taken those lessons to the bank and I don't think we'll repeat them. Good, because you did get lucky. <laughs> yes, we did. And I think the valuable lesson there for everybody that's on this call is, while that was fantastic, they, they did end up with additional profit. For the most part, if you have not confirmed those numbers, in all likelihood, you have a very high risk that it will not be to your favor. <laughs> so, oh, I'm sorry. Oh. Okay. Yeah, and um, I cannot, I cannot even remember why we did not know that because I'm pretty sure I saw papers, but for some reason they turned out better than than we thought they were. Uh, I obviously had not done enough homework on it, but uh, we thought we had. Crystal, um, Jay teaches actually uh, finding those final numbers. Do you want to share with them uh, how to get those final numbers since I know you've done that multiple times? Sure. So when you are entering into a deal, so not at, 
not at the point where you're getting ready to close, not at the point where, but when you start, so when you've had the discussion and it sounds like you guys have a potential to work together, you're going to have them get you one, the most recent mortgage statement, two, they're going to send you a 30-day payoff. So they need to request a 30-day payoff and you need to have evidence of that. Um, before papers are drawn at the attorney's office, before you enter into the deal, because until then you don't know what you're talking about. And then in addition to that, you're going to ask them for other documentation relative to the property. But from the financial side, those are the key pieces that you need to make sure that what you're getting into. And then especially if it's in arrears, but just to assure when you're at the closing table, you'll want a conversation with the, um, with the attorney, the substitute, substitute trustee, just to make sure and confirm your numbers in terms of payoff to get this current. So you just don't want anything left to chance there. You, you don't want to leave this window open. Um, and, and just for some clarity, a recent mortgage statement is not going to tell you what that is. So you do have to communicate with the substitute trustee so you can have that number and be sure of what you are, are actually into this deal for and how that you're going to get that so that it's current. Perfect. Awesome. And I think part of uh, another lesson here that we learned is we hadn't worked with, well, we hadn't before and we haven't since worked with someone that was not face-to-face, -face, worked with someone out of our area. And Wes had met face-to-face -face with the other sellers or the other heirs, and they were handing over all sorts of paper to him. But because we never saw this woman face-to-face, -face, that might have been a reason that some of that slipped between the tracks and the fact that I was in Ireland I'm sure played a part right Wes I'm but sure. but I will say this is regardless of what information goes to your attorney it should come to you always first so I am always the first stopgap or our it's actually our assistant at this point but they know they have to send it all in and that that will then be forwarded on to the attorney that way we can verify and we know that we're all on the same page so I would just recommend that when you are doing something like that while of course it's important to have your attorney engaged make sure that you receive that information because you're the only person that can make the decision as to whether or not this is a good deal or a bad deal. That's not really up to your attorney. So you'd wanna make sure that you receive it. All those documents come to us. They are then forwarded to our attorney's office. Um, we wanna make sure we've reviewed them. And then also we have copies for our files that way. Awesome. Another little tidbit about this deal was not only was the mortgage behind almost 11,000, but it, the HOA was behind 1,400 just happens to be our HOA too, because we live in the same neighborhood. But um, the West was able to negotiate that 50%. So it cost 700 instead of 14. But when we were discussing this deal today, he said he wouldn't have, he would have paid the 14. He wasn't going to hold up the deal, but he was able to get them to take half of what was owed. And just my two cents, I just want to throw in there one of the key things that has come up several times within this whole conversation, and that is the fact that it's just people dealing with people. So in any situation that we're dealing with a for sale by owner client, so when we're, you know, just like what happened with Wes and Jenny, when you're dealing with somebody that's in foreclosure and working through the process, it's not gone yet to sale. There's just people dealing with people. So any level of conversation, any meeting of their needs any agreement you guys can come to is available to you. So, you know, never discount that. Always listen for what it, they are, but understand that it's just people dealing with people. So don't, don't cloud it with all your other preconceived notions because look at all they were able to accomplish even when things looked like they were kind of falling apart. Perfect. Yeah, we were sweating it, weren't we, Crystal? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, there were some, definitely some downslides, <laughs> but it's we were. I'll we fix. were sweating that we, we were just, we were sweating. We were going to lose some serious amount of money. And um, now, but, now yeah. I can, um, uh, I, I want to point out something else, what, Jenny, that you just brought up is to have somebody like Crystal or Jay there to throw some of this back, even though, you know, they may not be able to do anything only to have them there um, as a sounding board about ideas and thoughts of what to do, I think is just invaluable. If you guys had to go through this yourself without somebody with experience that has some, been through something similar, I think that would have made it a whole different experience for you. <laughs> it's well, even more tangible than that. 
uh, Taffy, because when when uh, I got the call, the voicemail from this seller that she wanted me out of the deal, I got Crystal to usher up her experience and give me some language to speak to her. Uh, she wrote me uh, a, a good letter. We used, we didn't use, we didn't send it off like that, but we, we took the, the language that she gave us and the key points and, and used that to express what we needed to, to the seller. And um, uh, it, it, it was, it was very helpful. She's, she has experience. She's done a lot of deals, a hundred this year, serious. <laughs> well, and that conversation that we had with Crystal, not only did she talk us off the ledge, but that whole conversation and advice and language and stuff that we sent on to the seller turned the tide. It, it was, I mean, it turned on a dime and then Wes capped it off with, let's just go ahead and pay you now, which she was all in the mood for. And so the two of those combined just turned it right around. We were quite, we were really thankful at that point that, um, and we left three weeks later for Israel. Remember that? Oh yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> I hardly got my suitcase unpacked, but it was it was a tense time, very tense. So yeah, if if at all uh, possible, avoid doing this business by yourself. <laughs> Surround yourself with people that can support and help you and provide you with that. Um, with that, I know we have a couple questions in the chat, and uh, Jeff, I'm going to hold off on your question real quick, because I want to uh, address, I guess, Barry asked the question, was the actual sale price what you had estimated? Um, we uh, were looking at it as optimistically as we could. We actually sold this property with a, um, a flat fee realtor. It cost us $395 to employ him. He put the property in MLS, gave us some initial advice, a CMA, about what the property could sell for. We shot high. We aimed for two hundred and ten thousand, I think, knowing that we probably wouldn't be able to stick with that figure. And over a, a couple of weeks, we kept dropping it down to I think about uh, one. I think we had it in MLS for one ninety five when we sold it, and we still ended up having to make some concessions at at, at the sale. So. But no, we didn't sell it for what we wanted to, but we were happy with the sales price nonetheless. Awesome. Well, if you can, you know, take over a property on terms um, with very little cash and walk away with 50 grand, uh, that's, that's still a pretty good deal. <laughs> so. It is. Mm -hmm.